when we're younger, all we want to do is become financially stable, not have to rely on anybody, be able to pay our own bills, have our own everything, our own car, our own place, our own peace of mind, be able to sleep at night, have our own furniture, pay for our own food. We want to feel like we're in control. And this exists within the minds of young people, middle-aged people, and some older people. And what I want to do is help you close the gap of time between how long it takes for you to become financially stable all the way to how long it takes for you to become wealthy. Because first, you must become financially stable. And what I mean by that is becoming stable-minded when it comes to personal finances and making stable decisions. Because your decisions are what will determine your future. And there's an old saying, you're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. The same can be said throughout your life. After you're born, yeah, you, you might genetically look like your parents, but as you make decision after decision, you become known and regarded for what your decisions have been throughout your life. So that is what I want to help you with today. So we're going to jump straight into this video. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I want to talk to you today about the mistakes that we often make when it comes to money that extends throughout our lives and we constantly pay for it. You know, at 20 years old, we may think that we're on top of the world. We have a little bit of money here. So, you know, instead of putting it away, instead of making smart decisions with it, let me go ahead and, and buy this thing that I don't need because it's going to make me feel good in the short term, but destroy me in the long term. What we don't realize is we make a lot of these mistakes. I've made a lot of these mistakes, but I'm here today to share a message with you. So hopefully you can take this and run with it. So we can turn the situation around and really change the narrative around personal finance so you can make a few good decisions consistently over the course of years and then sit back and relax and enjoy the wealth. So mistake number one is not having a plan. I always say have a plan and you, know, you already know the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And this is important because... From the point, like even before you start getting paid, there must be a plan. So let me give you a quick example. When I first got out of high school, I had to have a plan, okay? And before I even graduated high school, I had to have a plan for what I was going to do after high school, and that was to go to college. Do I expect everyone to go to college? Do I think everyone should go to college? Absolutely not. It's not for everybody, and you can be 100% successful with or without college. But that was what I decided to do. And before I even got to college, I needed to decide which major I was going to join because I knew that it would be smart that before I even got into college, I needed to understand which major I was going to choose. And I needed to base it off of what salary I could expect. And I even thought as far as what city would I be living in. That is a quick example of planning. But as you start making money, as you start working your full-time job, as you start thinking about moving out and getting out on your own and everything like that, you must have a plan. And that plan needs to be based off of the amount of money that you will be making. But a lot of us, we don't plan. We just say, gosh, I'm sick of living with my parents. I want nothing to do with them anymore. They're annoying. They're blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you live on and they become the best of friends with you. It's crazy how that works. But I know the frustration. When I was in high school, I couldn't wait to go to college and never come back. I couldn't wait because I wanted my own independence. I wanted all the things that I was talking about earlier in this video. I wanted my own place, my own space, my own furniture, my own relaxation, my own peace of mind. But if you want that, you have to understand what it means to have that. It means to be an adult, a responsible adult at that. And if you're going to be a responsible adult, you have to to plan. And what I see in the world and in people that I know and people that I speak with every day and just what I see on a day-to-day -day basis, I see a severe lack of planning. When people get promotions at work or raises at work, there's no plan with that. And we'll get into that a little bit later. And there's a lack of planning in a big spectrum. I mean, we're talking about when people graduate from high school or college, the plan is not there. And I'm not talking about just a plan of, oh, I want to do this. I'm talking about a solidified plan of how you're going to actually get there. Or if you start working, and this is the main audience, I'm talking about when you start working, what is your five-year plan? Because if you don't plan early on, you could mess around and spend 20 years in a profession that you don't even like or that you're not even passionate about. And you could be taking a salary that is much less than what you'd like to be taking. Or you could give into what a lot of people give into without even realizing it. And this is something that I almost fell into myself. And that is continuously operating a level or two under your actual skill level. 
And setting those plans in place and those goals in place early on is going to help you feel and have a feel for when you're operating a level or two below what you're actually worth. It's going to help you understand where you are versus where you should be financially. It's going to help you understand which decisions you should be making and how you should be basing your decisions. So that's why I'm so glad when I was 21 and I first started working. I said, you know what? I'm going to take me a day. I'm going to lay out a five-year plan and just see how I live up to it. And I'm going to, within this five-year plan, I'm not just going to say what I want and what my goals and dreams are. And I'm, I'm not going to just make like a, a vision of what I feel my future should be. I'm going to give myself action steps to actually get there. And so it needs to be like that with everything when it comes to finances. Like let's say you're making 40 grand a year right now. Okay. How much do you want to be making in five years? And don't get discouraged when you're making this because it's very easy to overestimate what you can complete in one year. And then when you get to a year, you realize you're not anywhere near there. But we often underestimate where we can be within a few years. That right there is what I want to talk to you about today. So just keep that in mind as we move on throughout this video. And if you want to get even better at planning, I'm not just talking financially. I'm talking about with goals. I'm talking about with work. I'm talking about with life in general. You should definitely check out my book. It's called The Wealth Journey. It talks about everything that revolves around building wealth from a young age on to retirement age. It's mainly for professionals who want to improve their financial situation and having a clear path of where they should go so they can one day reach financial freedom. It's available on Amazon if you want to check it out. But anyway, we're going to jump into the next topic, which I'm extremely, I mean, extremely passionate about. And I talk a great deal about this in my book. It is called Lifestyle Creep. And that is the second mistake that I want you to avoid if you ever want to become financially stable. Because listen, there is nothing stable about continuously adding on to your expenses just because your pay went up 3%. Sorry, but whoop de doo like, honestly, we have to think about every dollar that we make more, we overestimate how much that actually is. And what we do is we take our expenses and we multiply them. I'm talking about if you live in an apartment that's $1,000 and you get a, let's say you get a 5% raise and you're making $40,000 a year, that's $2,000 extra dollars a year. So if your rent was once $1,000 and now because you got that 5% increase, which is $2,000 a year on a $40,000 salary, so now you're making $42,000 a year. If you go into a place that is now $1,100 a month, you literally chop $1,200 off that raise automatically. And you know what's guaranteed to happen? Your rent is going to go up every single time it's time to renew your lease. You know what's not guaranteed? Another raise. It's not even guaranteed that you'll be working there next year. So I want you to take this in and understand there's certain things that will always happen. And there's certain things that you may expect like a raise, like a promotion, but they are not guaranteed to happen. And when you choose to have lifestyle creep or some people call it lifestyle inflation, you choose the now over the future. That right there is not a financially stable decision. And I'll just tell you a few of my guilty pleasures. I like watches. I like shoes. I like to look nice. I like to wear nice clothes, you know. But just because I get a pay increase, or even if I get a big pay increase, and I've gotten a lot of big pay increases lately. I mean, I'm talking 10% and up, like consistently. It's pretty crazy how it's worked. But not once did I say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy shoes every paycheck I could, but that wouldn't be a wise decision. I didn't say, you know, I got a pay raise. I got a promotion. I got the YouTube income coming in. I got Amazon from the book sales coming in. You know what I mean? I could have been like, I'm going to upgrade my apartment. Instead of being in a one bedroom, I'm getting a two bedroom or whatever the case was. I learned from my past mistakes because when I got my first job, when I was making $60,000 a year at 21 years old, I thought I was rich. You couldn't tell me much. So instead of getting a single bedroom, I got me a whole townhouse with two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. It was just me, single, no kids, none of that. I didn't need to do that. So I learned from my past mistakes. But that's also a result of not planning. When you just do things like that, there's not a lot of planning that goes behind it. There's not a lot of number crunching behind it. Like, you know what, let me do the math and, ooh, that's actually going to basically make it to where I'm in the same situation as I am now. Do I want that? Because the only thing you get in return is appearances and a little bit more comfort, but 
you don't get more money because of it. That upgrade from the $1,000 to the $1,100 apartment just because it's nicer or has better amenities or whatever the case is, that is not a wise decision. Or buying a new watch every time you get paid or buying a new pair of shoes every time you get paid, it's still going to dwindle down the amount that you're actually getting. So it's not much different than your current situation. The only thing is in return, you get something temporary and you're feeding your guilty pleasures and your vices and things of that nature. But is it helpful toward your future? That's why you have to plan. That's why you have to not give in the lifestyle creep. You have to understand what you're comfortable with right now and if you don't need to upgrade, why upgrade? And honestly, the same thing goes for stuff like cell phones, because sometimes you can feel so on top of the world that you don't just upgrade your apartment. You don't just get new shoes or nice watches or nice things in general. Now the new iPhone came out. Let me get a new iPhone. And by the way, I did get the new iPhone, but I was more than due for an upgrade. I, I usually don't upgrade my phone for four to five years. So it was time for me to get an upgrade. But I want you to really, really think about that. And I have an entire video about lifestyle creep that I recommend you watch that goes even more in depth on that stuff. I'm basically just scratching the surface on this, but that's a really important topic that I really recommend that you check out and understand what to do and what not to do when it comes to lifestyle creep. It's a pretty popular video on this channel. And I think if you haven't watched it, you'd get a lot of value out of it. And then last but not least, my favorite topic ever, not investing. Man, oh man, oh man. If I had a dollar for every person that I met who is over 40 that has not yet set up their 401k, I would have more money than I care to admit. And here's the thing, when you start young, like if you're in your 20s right now, or even if you're in your 30s right now and you haven't started and you start right now, by the time you're in your 60s, you will be so happy that you decided to do it because I don't wanna just tell you the benefits of investing. I wanna show you like, how much it costs to not invest because everyone feels that, oh, well, investing is too much or, oh, well, I don't have the type of money. Look, a lot of people around here have really nice things. If you just take a stroll, you know what I mean? You'll see people with nice cars, with nice cell phones, nice places, nice couches, nice TVs, nice PlayStations, game systems, PCs, laptops, nice jobs, nice clothes. I can keep going, but you get where I'm going with this. So what I'm saying is if you put just a fraction of the money that you're putting into all of that stuff into the stock market, you'll be rich because the whole point of it is compound interest. So right now, if you invested between $250 to $500 per month in the S&P 500, so let's say a fund like VOO, which if you don't know what that is, that's fine. I have other videos that talk about it. It's just, uh, it's Vanguard's ETF that matches the S&P 500. That's all it is. And it has over 500 companies within the fund. And it has Apple and Microsoft at the top, and it has a bunch of iconic companies within it. But most of the money goes into Apple and Microsoft. If you just put that amount of money in it every single month, it could be any number between that range from 18 all the way to 65, do you know you'll be a millionaire? Guaranteed, you will. And right now the stock market is down. Right now the stock market is bloody and a lot of people are afraid and, and they don't know what to do. When, when the stock market is red like that, it's in your best interest to put even more money in there. Because even if you were doing a flat 250 every month in that fund that I was just telling you about, the crazy thing is since the stock market is down, the price of that fund then goes down. So you could get more of it for less money. And the more shares you buy over the course of your lifetime, the more you gain once it goes up in price. That's why it's so good to get it at a low price. So in short, not investing just a few hundred dollars a month can cost you millions in the future. And you know, Obviously, when you go from 18 to 65, your salary is definitely going to increase. So you might end up doing going from 250 a month to 1250 a month. And then it's going to get even more. You get what I mean? So it's going to double and triple. So investing is extremely important. And that's why these three tie in together. When you're not having a plan, you could be planning to, you know, when I get to this point, I want to start investing this amount of money. Or right now, I'm, in, I'm only able to invest $100 a month, but once I get my savings right, then I'm going to start doing $200, $300, $400, and mm -hmm. then get to $1,000 a month. Once I get my debt paid off, I'm going to put even more money into my investments. That's planning. That's thinking in the long term. 
I'm not going to touch any of my investments until at least 20 years from now. That's long-term thinking. That is planning. And that is just the most amazing thing you can do when it comes to your future. And when you look at lifestyle creep, it's like, okay, cool. I got a 5% increase in pay. I'm going to pretend like that 5% doesn't even exist. What I'm going to do with that, I'm going to put it in my savings. And then once I get my savings right, I'll use that 5%. It'll go straight to investments. Like I don't even notice it. Boom, boom, boom. And you'll be extremely happy once you make those right decisions. So those are the mistakes to avoid if you want to become financially stable. I really hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I love making these videos for you guys. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comment section. If you have any video recommendations, go ahead and let me know what it is. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.